welcome back for another video. Today's video will be about the Pomona Eastside Ghetto Family Gang. Pomona, California is known to be plagued by crime and gang violence. The Pomona Eastside Ghetto Family was not always a gang. Ghetto Family used to be a tag crew, but because their members were committing crimes, they eventually were recognized and became official under the 13 card. Juan Lopez is a member of the Ghetto Family Gang in Pomona. A derogatory term for Ghetto Family members used by rival gangs is Goldfish or Fish. One of Ghetto Family's rival gangs is Raza Unida. The victim in this case remembers a Raza Unida. A derogatory term for Raza Unida members is Rats. Juan and his family lived in a house which was adjacent to a local cemetery. Although Ghetto Family members would hang out at Juan's house, neither the house nor the cemetery was in territory claimed by Ghetto Family. The area was not claimed by Raza Unida either, but was traditionally associated with the third unrelated gang. Several Raza Unida members were visiting the nearby cemetery. On October 22nd, 2015, at around 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Ghetto Family members and non-member friends were in Juan's yard drinking beer and taking drugs, marijuana and meth to be exact. Juan and one of the others left to go buy more drugs. Those remaining in the yard included James Barden, who would ultimately be charged with Juan, and a young man known only as Carlos. At the same time, Rosa Unida member Joe Morales was at the cemetery to visit his brother's grave. Some time later, he was joined by fellow Raza Unida member Anthony Torres. Torres had a gun. A third man joined them as well. At some point, the Ghetto Family Gang in Duan's yard and the Raza Unida group in the cemetery noticed each other. From the yard, Carlos said, F rats, jumped over the five foot wall separating the yard from the cemetery and started running towards the Raza Unida members. Torres flashed his gun. Carlos froze and ran back to safety in Juan's yard. When Juan and his friend returned from buying drugs, the group in his yard told him what happened. Juan and his friends briefly beat up Carlos for jumping over the wall and approaching their enemies. In the cemetery, several more people had joined the Raza Unida group. They were drinking beer. They were taunting the Ghetto Family Gang, calling them fish and goldfish. They turned to Barden and said, let's go get these fools. At Juan urging, Barden got into the driver's seat of a black SUV. Juan entered the front passenger seat. The others got into another car to follow. As the Ghetto Family Gang got into their vehicles, they saw the Raza Unita group getting into theirs, one of which was a silver Ultima. Barden believed that he and Juan were on a mission. The SUV was dangerously low on fuel, and Barden suggested they stop at a gas station. Juan said, no, let's go get these fools. Juan, who was carrying a gun, had the gun out and ready. As Barden drove past the entrance to the cemetery, he did not see the any Raza Unita gang members still there. He knew a spot where they would be hanging out at, the home of one of the men who had been to the cemetery, and he believed that was the destination of the Raza Unita members who had left. He drove in that direction. As Barden drove, Juan spotted the silver Ultima and pointed it out to Barden. The car was about a block ahead. Stopped at a red light in the left lane. Barden turned the SUV into the emergency center lane and sped all the way down to where the Altima stopped. Barden slammed on the brakes, ending up slightly ahead of the Altima. The SUV was in the left turn pocket, so that's the SUV's passenger side was adjacent to the driver's side of the Altima. Barden had also turned the SUV slightly into the lane to his right. He had been trying to cut off the Altima. Morales was in the driver's seat of the Altima. Torres in the front passenger seat. The passenger window of the SUV was already down. The passenger window of the SUV was already down. Juan was wearing a black bandana covering his face from nose to chin. He leaned his upper body out of the passenger window and fired two rounds at the victims. At this point, Juan's gun jammed and he popped back into the SUV and attempted to unjam the gun. Torres returned fire and once Juan had fixed his jam, Bullets flew between the two cars. Barden completed the left turn and drove off. As he did, Juan screamed at the window, F rats, ghetto family. Morales had been killed. Torres was not injured. Juan had been shot in the eye and was taken to a local hospital. 
realizing that Juan's eye injury required a trauma center, which that hospital did not have. One of the nurses said Juan would have to be transferred to Pomona Valley Hospital. Barden completed the left turn and drove off. As he did, Juan screamed at the window, F rats, ghetto family. Morales had been killed. Torres was not injured. Juan had been shot in the eye and was taken to a local hospital. Realizing that Juan's eye injury required a trauma center, which that hospital did not have. One of the nurses said Juan would have to be transferred to Pomona Valley Hospital. Juan said, I'm not going there and ran out. In the hospital parking lot, two men in a parked car were talking with the hospital employee standing outside the car. Juan approached and asked them to drive into a hospital. The employee told Juan that there was an emergency room right behind him. Juan pulled a knife, ordered the two men out of the car, and drove off in their car. Juan Lopez and another ghetto family member, James Barden, were charged with murder. James would later have his charges reduced by entering a guilty plea and received seven years on accessory and gang enhancement charges. James Barden testified against his own homie, Juan Lopez, and went into detail about the crime. Because of the testimony by his own homie, Juan Lopez was found guilty of first degree murder, as well as attempted premeditated murder of Torres, as well as gun and carjacking charges. This would get ghetto family member Juan Lopez 25 years to life.